Today I want to clean up my storage a little bit, and while I went through all the hardware that I accumulated over the last year from the scrapyard, I came across plenty of CD and DVD drives. Today I want to find out which of those drives still work, which ones don't, and maybe which ones are worth trying to restore. I am aware that optical drives are not everybody's cup of tea. However, speaking for myself, I had always good memories about optical drives, and the reason is very simple. Games. When optical drives came out, games made a huge leap forward. An example that comes to mind is X-Wing. It was released in 1993 on 5 floppy disks. A year later it was re-released on a CD-ROM. This time the game is called Star Wars X-Wing Collector's CD-ROM. And apart from some visual improvements, all mission briefings were voiced over. You will fly in mock combat against other rebel starfighters. Each new attacker will be more aggressive than the first. That added so much immersion to the game that I cherish to this day, and I have fond memories of X-Wing released on CD-ROM in 1994. Another game that I remember playing back in the day and was released on CD-ROM was Strike Commander. It was such a great game and I remember finishing it. But that may be a topic for a completely different video. Today we need to figure out if those optical drives are working. So I just set up a test system, it's a Pentium 3, and we will hook up every single drive to that system and see if it can read from a CD-ROM or DVD. Of course we will listen to the noise each drive makes, and maybe based on the noise we can figure out if a drive is worth saving. Maybe some of them just need some lubrication, others may have some plastic parts broken off inside, and others may have to go back to the scrapyard. But that decision is completely up to you, so you can let me know in the comments if you see one drive that you had back in the day or you think that is worth saving, you let me know in the comments and we will see what we can do in a follow-up video. But for today I just want to go over the drives, show you which drives I have and see if they are giving a sign of life. I could go ahead and use my original Windows installation disks to test these drives, but I do not trust them and that is why I created some backup copies of my operating system installation disks. We have one DVD and one CDR, so Windows 98 second edition and Windows 7 will be the backup disks that I will be using to test the CD drives. And I think we'll start with one that I have already shown you in one of my scrapyard videos, which is this HP Hewlett Packard CD Writer. It's an HP CD Writer Plus 8200 series. And I think here are some more details. So we have a 4x, 4x, 32x, and this probably means, let's see. So here we have the compact disc logo. It says recordable and rewritable. So this drive can work with rewritable CD-ROMs. So these numbers here probably mean 4x speed for recordable media, 4x speed for rewritable media, and 32x to read CD-ROMs. What we also need to make sure of is that our drive is configured correctly. I only have one drive on my IDE cable and it will be configured as master. That is why I have to move this jumper one to the right, that we have a master drive on our system. And I will hook this up now and then we will also get a output here on the right top corner where we will see the boot process and going into Windows and then we will try the CD-ROMs that I have shown you before. The HP writer is now connected. I will switch on the system and maybe we will hear already how this drive behaves when we power it on. Whoa. Oh, that doesn't sound good at all. Let's see if it's... Yes, here's the... Okay, at least it was detected by the BIOS. Let's see if we can access this drive in Windows. Yes, we have a CD drive. Can we open it? Yes, it does. So let's see if we can read a... Well, it's a little bit dirty, but I guess all of those drives have multiple years of dust and dirt collected inside these trays so they have to be cleaned anyway 
But let's see if it can read a CD-ROM. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Something is not right. Okay, I guess the CD is okay, but I don't think I want to use this drive for any of my original CDs or any CDs for that matter. So yeah, something is definitely not right here. Let's try this one more time. Moves the entire drive is moving. At least this HP drive could read the auto run application on this CD, but yeah, I think we have to open that up and see what's going on inside. Next up is a drive from LG. This is also an IDE drive and again it is configured for slave. We need to have it as a master drive. Okay, and let's see what this drive is going to do. I don't hear any startup noise from this drive, but it is detected. Okay, let's go into Windows and see if we can read a CD-ROM or a DVD. Okay, let's see if this drive is detected in Windows and we can maybe even read a CD-ROM. And here is the drive. Let's see. Okay, the mechanism is very silent and very smooth, so that's good. Let's see if we can get a Windows CD-ROM recognized. And yes, this drive seems to be working. So let's see some cool video clips. Yeah, so this looks this looks really good. I don't have any sound card installed, but yeah, we can read from a CD-ROM. So this drive seems to be working fine with CD-ROMs. So let's try the same with a DVD. This is the Windows 7 installation disk. Why it wouldn't see... Okay. Well, there's definitely something written on it. But it does not like to read this... this disk. No, there is no response from this drive. Now, since this drive doesn't seem to be a big disk scratcher I am willing to risk my Windows 7 original DVD to see if we get a different behavior and unfortunately no so yeah, unfortunately this looks like it's a dead DVD drive. CD drive seems to be fine, DVD not so much. So the next drive is a DVD-ROM. This drive is a DHM G48R. There is not much other information here. It says Ultima Electronics Corporation manufactured in August 2003 and otherwise the drive looks quite clean. So let's see what we get when we power on the system. Let's double check our configuration. So we have master, master is here on the right and this is already configured to be a master drive. So let's see what we get when we go into Windows. Drive is very silent. I don't hear anything. A drive is detected as well. Okay, let's see what we get in Explorer. Yes, we get a drive. And can we eject the tray? Wow, this is very soft and very smooth. Let's try a CD-ROM.
perfect. This drive seems to be working very well. Okay. Let's see if it can read DVDs. Yes, looks good. I know it cannot install Windows 7 on top of Windows 98, but that's okay. So this drive seems to be fully working. A drive from 2003. So that's great. But now let's move on to the next one. And this is the first creative drive. It looks clean from the outside, a little bit rusty here on the housing. It has all the important things here on the back, stamped into the back of the case. It has some audio connectors and it is configured already as master. So let's see how this drive is behaving when we fire up our test system. Let's see what we get. I think this is only a 32 speed CD-ROM drive. Oh, interesting, but it definitely didn't say creative. So, okay. Does the drive show up? Yes, we have a drive. Can we eject? It's, it's harsh, but it does. So, can it read CD-ROMs? No, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't spin up. No, it doesn't want. This is just so rough. Let's try again. It spins up a little bit and then it stops. Let's see if it can read an original CD. I am risking my Windows 98 installation disk. Let's see if we get something different now. There is something going on, but no access. Ah, what a shame. No. This drive doesn't want to spin up. Okay, unfortunate, but let's have a look quickly at what's on the labels of this drive because when we boot it up, it didn't say anything about creative, it said something else. So let's have a look. Okay. So what drive is this? So what do we have? It was made in nineteen in July nineteen ninety eight. Matsushita. So this is Panasonic, I think you guys told me in the, one of my other videos. This is a Panasonic drive, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, it also was detected as such when we went through the post screen. So yeah, this one I think definitely I want to try to see what's going on. There is no DVD mentioned. This is a pure CD drive, but it's clean. So maybe we should try to open this and uh, see. Maybe we can figure out what's going on. Why does it not work? But yeah, so unfortunately, very nice creative drive, at, re at least labeled as creative, but clearly a Panasonic drive because of our Matsushita Kotobuki Electronics Industries Limited, made in Japan. So let's see.
Now let's go ahead and have a look at a Plexter drive. This one I think I played around with already before, um, but I still want to show you another IDE drive. It was made in May 2003. We have configurations printed on our top here with stickers. We need to move this to a master drive. And the Plexter drive shows up, that's good. And in Windows, we also get a drive. So let's see how this one works when we eject the tray. It's a little bit rough, but it's okay. It's just a little bit energetic when it ejects the tray. Let's see if it can read CD-ROMs. No? Really? Oh. Now it spins up. Okay. Mm, okay, it just didn't trigger the auto run, I guess. But... Okay, it can read CD-ROMs. Okay. So let's see if it can read DVDs. It has a DVD logo on the front. So let's see. DVD. Okay. The light is still on. Now it's off. It's does something, but it's not auto-playing the content, but I guess it can read the data, although it's very silent. I can't hear anything. It's very silent, but it seems to be able to get to the files. Let's try to open one. Uh, maybe this one here. Yeah, that doesn't... Well, it spins up and then stops. There might be something in the bush here. Maybe it's just the laser that's inside. It's a little bit dirty, but we have to see. Okay, this drive is uh, not working. I have to check what's going on with it. If there is just maybe a misalignment or if there is a dirty lens or a broken laser array i don't know we will have a look and if you by the way have some information or details that i could read up on just trying to revive some of these drives please let me know in the comments what i should read what i should look out for because i have never done this but i would like to preserve some of those optical drives if possible so i don't think we are going to go anywhere here let's just move on to the next drive so plexter Unfortunately, this drive seems to be not working. Okay, next up is a drive from Sony. This is a drive from 1996. I don't see any speed rating and unfortunately I'm missing the front cover. So I don't even know if this is worth saving. It's, I think... For now, it's the oldest drive that I have shown you so far. Okay, so we need master to be to the very right, and this is already the case. So let's see how this drive behaves when we power up the system. Okay. Uh, there is some noise coming from the drive. You hear that, right? Let's see if the drive shows up in Windows Explorer. Yes. Can we eject? Oh, it's stuck. There you go. Okay. There you go, my friend. Okay, let's try this from here one more time. 
Aha, uh -huh, okay, maybe it wasn't open for a very long time and got stuck. So let's see if it can read a CD-ROM. I don't think this drive can read DVDs. I highly doubt that. But the question is, can it read a CD-ROM? Light is on, but nothing moves. And I think... Also, nothing moves in Windows. There is no spin up, no movement, nothing. Maybe, let's see if I put the Windows 98 to the top. Let's see if it moves. No. I cannot hear anything. Oh, it did move. It did move a little bit. I think if I try this another 10 times, it may actually come back to life. Yeah, it moved further. Let's try one more time and then we call it a day. This is maybe a drive that we can open up and see what's going on inside. I have no idea what's going on in there. But it tries. It tries. Okay. I think enough. This drive is not capable of reading any CD-ROM. We will have to check what's going on inside and figure out if there is something that we can actually fix or not. Okay, I wanted to wear gloves for this one, but I will try not to touch it that much. This is another creative drive. It's very dirty. It's an 8-speed compact disc, so this is a CD-ROM. We have a model number, CD Master 8E, SCR830. We have September 1996, so this is also an older drive. We have Slave Master. Okay, we need to move this one. The back of the drive looks good. I think I took this drive out of a PC. So that was good that there are no scratches on it. That's nice. So let's see. What will happen if we power on the system? Will we have a creative drive that will actually work? Okay, we have a... LED light. Is it being detected? Yes, we saw some very short string. Uh, let's see if it shows up in Windows. Now I already see there's maybe a problem here. It's just blinking and blinking. Let's see if I can open it. No. Oh. <laughs> there is a Windows 98 installation disk in it. Oh. And. Oh. <laughs> Plus a code. Okay. What is this? For distribution. This is the first edition, I guess. Do not make illegal copies. Okay. I guess they left the Windows CD in their drive while they were throwing out the PC. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see. Okay, so the drive shows up. Can we eject from here? Okay, so it opens and closes immediately. I think there may be some problem with the mechanism. I think this may not... 100% open or it doesn't reach a specific position where it thinks like everything is fine and it just undoes whatever it tries to do because it thinks there may be a problem. So, but I think uh, it didn't spin up either. Now this will be interesting. Let's see. Okay, that was that was cool. So let's see if it can read something. A 
but I hear a lot of clicks. There is no spin whatsoever. Yeah, this drive definitely doesn't work. Ah, another creative drive having an issue. But I got another Windows 98 CD. And it looks actually uh, almost decent condition. Okay. Unfortunately, another creative drive that doesn't work. I heard they're very prone of failure and most of them don't work. So, yeah, it's a shame. I hope that we can open it and clean it a little bit. Maybe the drive is salvageable and can be repaired. So this is a DVD-ROM. It doesn't have any stickers or whatsoever on the housing. So we don't know who made it. And I don't think there is anything written here. No. Oh. Oh, we do have something. Oh, again, a Panasonic drive. There we go. I was expecting this on the other side. These yellow stickers usually are quite generic, but I was wrong. So again, we have a Matsushita Kotobuki Electronics Industry Limited. This time Indonesia, not Japan, I guess. So model SR8587C, February 2002. This drive is quite uh, modern, at least not as old as the other two ones that we looked at. So let's see what we get when we power on our test system. Okay, but it's showing up. I couldn't catch if there was some indicator how fast this drive is supposed to be. But it is a DVD drive, so we should be able to read CD-ROMs and DVDs. But my track record for today is very poor. So yeah, most of these drives are not in working condition. I can already imagine the comments. Oh, you see, you like optical drive. None of them are working. <laughs> okay, it's stuck. Come on, try again. Come on, open. <laughs> Let's try to open this manually. There we go. Okay, it's empty. Oh, it can't open. Okay. So, does it? It's because of these ones here that it got stuck. Oh, okay. No. Let's see, does it read something? Something. CD-ROM. I hear some noise. Very discouraging noise. The same noise all over and over and over again. I don't think we will read anything with this drive. And now my CD is stuck in there. Oh! No? It improved? I fixed something. Ah, now it's stuck again. Okay, enough. This drive also is supposed to be opened and looked at. Let's move on to the next drive. This time we have a Samsung drive and we have a rewrite, so I guess we have 52 reading, 32 rewriting, and 52 writing. This is only a CD-ROM, no DVD support. What else do we have? SHR522. When was this made? 
I don't see here. August 2005. I think this is the newest drive that I have here so far. And it's still an IDE drive. It's configured for slave. Yes, the center one. We need to change this to master. And then let's see what's happening when we power on this drive. Okay, the LED is blinking. Let's see if it's detected. Okay, it uh, TS Corp, I think. That's interesting. I'm not sure if this was Samsung's. I have to read that up. A, a drive was detected, let's say. So let's see, maybe we have another disk in the drive. It shows up. Again, it's stuck. Oh, okay, optical drives. <clears throat> I should not have wasted my time with these, I guess. I need a smaller screwdriver. Let's try. I got my uh, cleaner for the nozzle of the desoldering station. Let's see if we can unblock this. Okay, here's the mechanism. Yes. What's going on here? Okay, they are very dirty and... I guess this is what I meant initially with some lubricant. This plastic feels very brittle and uh, it's just... It, it just feels bad, but... Oh, okay. So probably whatever rubber is in there got weak and I can no longer... The rubber band in there is too weak to push the tray in and out. Come on, go back in. I have to help it a little bit, but can you get out? No, it just is too weak. Okay, but that may be something that I can try to fix, I don't know. But let's see if it can read something. So I just helped it a little bit. Okay, these are just the worst drives ever. Okay, system is frozen. <laughs> no wonder why all these drives are at the scrapyard, I guess. Look at that. This drive works. Okay, that's crazy. Ooh, I didn't do anything. It did it all by itself. It's healing itself. Okay, maybe not. Okay, enough. Bye-bye. Okay, so this drive needs attention, but it may be recoverable. Okay, here comes the last creative drive. This is heavy. This drive is by far the heaviest drive I have looked at today. Unfortunately, I guess there is a remote control. Unfortunately, I don't have it. Very interesting drive. It feels sturdy. What do we have here? We have model CD4020E. Did it say something in the front? I think I saw only compact disc, okay. Do we see anything else that's interesting? September 1998. And otherwise there is not much information here. Creative technology. Okay. Ah, uh, May. This one should work. So again, it's 
on slave. So let's move this to master. Here we go. And let's plug it in and see if this very old creative drive works. Okay, it made some noise. Let's see if it's being detected. Yes, we have actually a creative labeled drive detected by the BIOS. That's interesting. Now the big question is if we can read CD-ROMs. I don't think this can read DVDs, just CD-ROMs, but even that seems to be a challenge for my drives today. Okay, drive shows up. Eject. Oh no. It's stuck. Take this one again. Let's try. Ooh. No, no movement. Oh, oh, okay, we are getting there and there was something written in Arabic. I don't know what that, what that was, I have no idea, but it has a CD inside. Yeah, I think this drive is... This probably needs proper cleaning. Uh, if you have an idea how to deal with those drives, please let me know. I would just open them up and try to clean them. Oh, this drive has... Oh, okay. This already has a broken hinge here. Maybe that's why it's not working properly. Now this button is also stuck. Ooh, okay, this is terrible. Okay, I think we have seen enough. I took my CD out. This is something we will have to look at when the drive is open. So here we go. A Plexter 241040. I think I had a similar version. I had the 121012 maybe or 121032. I think that was my drive that I had back in the day. I absolutely loved that Plexter. It was 600 Deutsche Mark. Uh, if you use the exchange rate, it was around 300 euros. Probably at that time, I don't know what it would be inflation adjusted, but I absolutely loved it. And this is the 24X version, the version that I didn't want to buy, maybe because it was 100 euros or 200 euros more expensive or because it wasn't released yet. So this one is the PXW2410TA, made in September 2001. And, uh, oh, it has a fan. And that fan looks quite clean on top of it. So this one looks like a really nice drive. Did I get this from the scrapyard? I'm confused now. It's not dusty. Looks pretty good. And it's configured as master. Let's see what happens when we power it on. Come on, maybe one more drive that works. So far I have only one drive that works and that's not even a DVD writer or CD writer. It's just a reader. So let's see. Last drive for today. Okay, we have a green light. Yes, Plexter detected. That's nice. Let's see what Windows is going to tell us. 
So this is only a CD-ROM drive. It's not capable of reading DVDs, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> it's also stuck. Oh no. Why is every drive stuck? Maybe. Oh. Wow. Okay. I think I got this from the scrapyard. Yes. Very slow, very heavy, very dirty. Oh yeah, this goes away. Okay, I definitely have to wash my hands now. I doubt this can read anything. It's so dirty. Oh? It reads! <laughs> It reads. Okay, that's nice. Ah, uh, I love these Plexa drives. I don't know why, I just love them. So this one definitely needs to be cared for. I don't want to work on it right away because I'm afraid I will damage something. I have to practice on some of the other drives first before I get my hands on this one. Now, can you open? Yes. Okay. It's just very, very loud and very noisy and very heavy. But yeah, so this one, nice. So now that you have seen all drives, let me know which drive do you think is worth saving? Is it all the creative drives? Are you even interested in CD-ROM drives or do you think I should just throw them out? Or do you want to learn something? then we can see and try opening all of those drives one by one and try to figure out what's going on. Or maybe I will just do this by myself and when I see something interesting, then I will just, you know, spend maybe two, three minutes per drive and see if I can make it work. Or you want to have a longer version, like this is completely up to you. Let me know in the comments and uh, yeah, let me know what you think about my Scrapyard CD drives. I mean... How many were there? One. So from the 11 drives that we've seen today, we have seen one fully working without issues. This one just had a little bit startup problems, I think. Like maybe, you know, it was a little bit shy after 15 years of not opening the tray. It definitely needs some cleaning and maybe some lubrication on all the mechanism inside, but it looks like it's working, at least it's reading. Uh, then we had the other Plexta drive, which was able to read CDs, but not DVDs. So this may be an issue which we will not be able to fix if it's something with the, the laser inside. But yeah, so from the 11 drives, two seem to be working. And all the others have issues, especially the creative drives, unfortunately, which I so want one to work. But yeah. Let me know in the comments which one you would like to see first or where I should try to practice on and then we'll take it from there. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching. A big shout out to all my Patreons and I will see you in the next one. Take care and bye bye.